Well, hello there. Welcome back to Hold and Modify. It's Q once again with YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And what are we doing today? What was the whole point of that little intro? Well, what I was showing you was the SCSI hard drive that came with that amazing Amiga 2500. And I also showed the SCSI adapter and an adapter for the SCSI adapter. Well, what all that is, I don't have an old Windows computer. I have a Windows 10 machine. It's actually a Threadripper. It's a very modern system. And it has PCI Express slots. Well, what's, what good's that going to do me? There's no SCSI PCI Express as far as I know, or I wasn't going to bother looking because as soon as I mentioned to our good old Amiga buddy, our Amiga Yoda, Chris Edwards, he immediately said, hold up, I have SCSI cards I can give you, and you can use those to get the Amiga hard drives backed up and, and safely tucked away. I was like, well, thank you, Mr. Chris Edwards. And so he went ahead and sent me in a card. And sure enough, it was a classic Adaptech PCI 2930U card. I have quickly realized that was not going to work in my Windows 10 system. Went on to eBay and found a StarTech adapter that simply converts PCI to uh, well, you know, I, I say simply converts PCI to PCI Express, but you saw the card. It's got a lot of stuff on there. You do have to provide, provide it power. And what I did was I have a, an ATX power supply just loose. I'm using that to power the SCSI hard drive and to power the uh, converter card. And I know I've been talking a lot, not showing anything. We're just sitting here looking at a workbench screen. Uh, but the point of this is to say that when I plugged that... Um, Adaptech into Windows 10, it of course yelled at me and said, I know what this is. I know it's a SCSI card. So that was a good thing, but it also couldn't do anything with it. It couldn't get a driver for it. So I had to go on Google and sift through a lot of uh, garbage. There's a lot of really suspect websites out there, malware type sites that have really sus, as I would say, drivers. So I did find a safe one. I'm going to link that in the description below. So if you're still watching this video of me just talking while we stare at a workbench screen, uh, yeah, if you look in the, uh, my description for this video, you will see a link to that file. And it's going to be hosted on my Google Drive for an indefinite amount of time. I don't see any reason why I would ever delete it. It's uh, very tiny. So you go through all of that, and now you fire up WinUEE in administration mode. You pick a profile, like uh, I picked Amiga 600 Plus because that's an Amiga 600 um, hard drive format. And this is an old Amiga 2500 running Workbench 2.0. So I was like, well, uh, let's go ahead and use that and because there's no 2000 profile. And when I booted it up, I got chaos. It just went to a black screen. It would, get, it would go all the way to the point of booting up Workbench here. And then it would just say, hey, look, this is Workbench. And it would go to a black screen. There was nothing I could do about it. I tried doing an Amiga 3000 profile. I tried doing a custom profile of changing ROMs and, and system types. I would always get up to here where it would show the hard drive would go clack, 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 it would boot up and I would see Workbench and I'm like, yay. And then it would just fall on its face. That got me thinking. There must be something that that original Amiga 2500 Workbench partition is initiating on load. Maybe it's the toaster. I have no idea, but something in that original workbench partition is triggering something that's freaking when you EE out. So I did the next logical thing, which was to boot again, hold down both mouse buttons. This time I disabled the workbench partition and then told it to boot from floppy. And I put in a workbench 2.0 floppy. That allowed the system to boot. So here we go. We have a workbench 2.0 floppy. And this is the... Amiga 2500 hard drive and the work partition. How great is that? I think this is fantastic. And as you can see, all of this fun stuff is on here. This this is a this is a videographer dream come true. This was a workhorse Amiga 2500. I'm not going to open these files because these are private personal files. Whoever this is. I'm, however, I went into this invoices 1994 folder and I also went into his notepad folder. And oh my gosh, everybody, there is so much fun stuff in there. There is bid sheets, there's um, quotes for projects they're working on, there's uh, notes for uh, what they're going to shoot that day when they go on location and set up cameras. There's letters from customers, happy and not so happy. It's just a great, uh, a great thing here. And I also discovered this roll them up. And yeah, it's an automatic teleprompting software. Isn't that cool? The point is, I have this real hard drive up and running 
in Windows 10 with WinUEE, and now I'm gonna copy its contents to archive it to this network share in my PC, this DH4 over here. So, so what I'm doing now is initially I just copied all of the original hard drive contents to a network share on my real PC. However, when you copy Amiga files to actual Windows or Mac folders, even if it's shared over a network, there's always that risk that the bits can get a little weird. There's something about the, I don't know, the file size or the, the bits that add up to the total byte counts can get wacky. So it is always best to create image files in WinUEE and mount those as drives so that the, the, as far as the Amiga is concerned, it thinks it's working with native hard drives, actual true native hard drives with a, and, and, and the data is going into a self-contained virtual image. So there shouldn't be any Windows uh, things going on to mess with the file. So what you're seeing here is I've created a 52 megabyte workbench image called WB. I've created a 52 megabyte workbench image called WRK work. Respectively, they're DH1 and DH2. Here's the native SCSI hard drive. Uh, I'm sorry, here's the native SCSI hard drive, system 2.0 and work partitions. And now I'm just go ahead and copying those uh, to these physical uh, image files. I want to use this opportunity to show you this chaos that I've got going on to make this happen. Please don't judge me. All right, so as you can see, here is my Threadripper system. It's beautiful, isn't it? On the floor, sitting on a metal rail, is the original 52 megabyte hard drive. We have our ATX power supply right here, feeding the hard drive power. And then down here, we've got the Adaptex SCSI card with the PCI to PCI Express adapter being powered also by this ATX power supply. I absolutely do not recommend this. It is chaos and quite dangerous, but it's here to serve this one purpose, to back up these SCSI hard drives and uh, preserve the content. And this is almost fate because I'm always talking about how Amigas were used in the United States and videographers were, was a big deal here. And this is exactly what this 2500 is. It is full of stuff, like I said, just full of little goodies from that era. So, Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this makes some sense to you and all of the things you have to do to go through to, to back up an Amiga. All right. Bye-bye.